We know today that hospital merger and acquisition activity and the creation of health systems out of independent hospitals uh, has been increasing each and every year um, since the passage of the Affordable Care Act. And uh, 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 much of the reason why we've seen an increase in such activity is because health, hospitals and health systems are attempting to, to bring more and more patients under management uh, in order to be able to deliver high, uh, high quality care at the lowest possible uh, price point. Uh, but from time to time, there are instances where, uh, for whatever set of reasons, hospitals may not want to merge or may not be able to merge. Um, that hospitals for community reasons, for political reasons, for other reasons, may want or need to stay independent. So to the extent that, that hospitals stay independent, what options do they have uh, to uh, improve their ability to um, bargain with payers, uh, to better coordinate their care with uh, uh, other hospitals or other, uh, other providers, um, to re reduce their cost uh, and improve the value that they're delivering to, 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 to patients. So from my way of looking at it, there are three ways in which hospitals can engage with other hospitals or other providers uh, together where, where they are not commonly controlled, meaning they're not commonly controlled by the same organization, and yet uh, have the ability to jointly contract with payers. One is if the hospital and providers are uh, uh, financially integrated, meaning they take risk on a common set of patients. A second is if hospitals and providers are clinically integrated. Uh, there, there are a set of, of, of rules and guidelines that have been established by the FTC and the DOJ that outline the conditions for a clinically integrated network. And to the extent that a network of providers, including hospitals, is clinically integrated, that network has the ability to jointly contract with payers to the extent that what they're looking to achieve is high quality care at the lowest possible price point, and that the joint contracting is necessary to, in order to generate revenue, which would be reinvested in the improvement of the practices. So you have financial integration, you have clinical integration, and then you have something called state action um, antitrust protection. State action antitrust protection is, a, is, is essentially a legal doctrine that says that under certain conditions, the state, um, and that would be any state in the United States, has the ability to confer either to state actors or to non-state actors antitrust protection provided uh, two things. One, that the conference of that protection is explicitly indicated in the legislation that uh, uh, um, created the entity. And two, that um, there was some level of state oversight that, 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 that occurs um, uh, uh, to ensure that the activities are what was represented and are indeed adding value, in, in this case we're talking about hospitals, to the, to, to the patients that are served. And uh, um, at my prior hospital, which was a public hospital, we actually took advantage of state action antitrust protection in order to be able to forge a collaboration with a, another large health system um, and do so in a way that didn't require that the systems be merged. Uh, because for, for political reasons and for other reasons, such a merger was not possible. Um, in this particular case, the, the hospital that I ran was a, a hospital that was heavily dependent on patients who were insured by the government, either Medicaid or Medicare. Um, there was a small but not insignificant amount of commercial volume, but uh, we were paid quite poorly by the commercial insurers uh, uh, for that care that was insured by the commercial insurers. And you know, as a result, the finances of this public hospital were quite challenged. Uh, so I was looking for options when I was running this hospital about what I could do to be able to work with a larger, uh, more established, and more financially secure partner uh, in order to be able to um, coordinate our clinical activities, but also do so in a way that would result in my hospital being paid more appropriately by the commercial insurers. Um, we started our, our work together by saying, you know what, let's become clinically integrated, meaning let's work together to establish joint clinical programs where the goal was to drive high quality care at the, at, at, at the lowest possible price point. And 
uh, service line by service line, we started to do that kind of work. Uh, but that was insufficient in this particular instance and it, to, to go to the next step, which was to, to be able to sit down in a, in a protected way with the payers and say that, that, that because we were working together clinically, therefore we should be able to jointly contract with the payers. Uh, so in order to get that added level of protection to make our clinical partner comfortable, our clinical affiliate comfortable, we sought and actually secured legislation that, that enabled my hospital um, to benefit from state action antitrust protection. So what did we do? Well, we, we secured legislation that was explicit uh, that, that said that my hospital, which is, was created as a public authority, uh, that the legislature understood that my hospital in certain instances would collaborate with other healthcare providers in such a way as the activities would be quote unquote anti-competitive, meaning that we would work together uh, uh, with other providers and that might reduce the overall amount of competition, but we were doing that for a purpose. And that was to improve the services that my public hospital was offering and to do so in a way where we were able to negotiate with payers and get paid appropriately. So we were very explicit in the legislation that was passed about what the goals and intent of the legislation were, which was to enable collaboration, to improve the services we were offering to, to patients, but to do so in a way that, that, that fairly compensated my, my, my hospital and allowed for joint contracting with larger providers, with the payers in the, in, in the, in the community. Um, and it provided for a level of oversight by, uh, by the, uh, the state government, in this case, the Department of Health, um, to ensure that the work that we were doing, the collaborative work that we were doing was consistent with the legislation and was consistent with the goals that, was that were established in the legislation relative to, to the patient population that we were serving. Um, this is very challenging legislation to secure. There was a lot of negotiating that I had to do. Uh, I, a lot of constituencies that were interested in the legislation that, uh, that, that, that was passed. Um, there were some concerns raised uh, by, by governmental officials uh, that we had to allay in order to get the legislation approved. And this was the first legislation passed in the, in the wake of a Supreme Court decision uh, called Phoebe Putney versus the Federal Trade Commission. And in that Supreme Court decision, which was rendered 9-0, and uh, the opinion was written by Justice Sotomayor, in that decision, the Supreme Court limited the, the, uh, uh, the ability to use state action protection. But in limiting the ability to use state action protection, the Supreme Court was also explicit about how you could um, access state action protection. And it was exactly as I've just articulated. Uh, um, you have to be explicit in the legislation and make it clear that the legislators understand the activities that you're going to undertake and why they might be anti-competitive and what the good that might come, come out of the, the, that, that work uh, that outweighs the anti-competitive nature of that effort and that there is state oversight of, of the collaborative work that's, that, that's being done. So, for example, to make that concrete, for example, this would allow... Uh, uh, a, a, a sort of a, a, a cha financially challenged public hospital to collaborate with a, a, a financially better endowed um, health system to improve, say, cardiovascular services that are being offered to a, um, a, a poor population, and to do so in a way um, that would allow the public hospital to benefit from joint contracting with uh, the payers. It might help the public hospital to enter into uh, risk arrangements or pay for performance arrangements that they might otherwise not be able to negotiate with the payer. But again, in collaboration with the more the the the, the better off uh, and larger uh, um, hospital system, in collaboration with that hospital system, uh, they might be able to access payment models that they wouldn't be able to access uh, um, on their own. Clearly. Uh, uh, um, negotiating payment arrangements with the payers can't be the, the, the main driver, the main reason for this sort of legislation. The main driver, the main reason for this sort of legislation uh, is to serve patients, to deliver high quality care at, 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 a, at, a, at a low uh, price point. But you, you can use this type of protection, state action protection, to allow for collaboration also in joint contracting, which will help to, to generate the funds, which will enable the investments 
that will allow for that kind of care to be delivered.